Good morning, everyone. Any enterprise data platform is a crucial aspect of any organization's technology landscape that provides a central repository for all kinds of data. There are several benefits why organizations choose to build an enterprise data platform. Overall, an enterprise data platform helps organizations to maximize the value of the data by providing a unified and centralized approach to data management and analytics. Building an enterprise data platform on the cloud has several benefits over traditional on-premise solutions. It provides scalability, increased availability, improved security, integration with other cloud services for analytics, and several other benefits. In this short video, I would like to show how to build an enterprise data platform with just a click of a button. I am Prasanna Sridharan, working as a principal data architect in AWS. I want to introduce Atomix, and one-click data framework, which enables enterprise customers build the data platform on the cloud with just one click of a button, which would otherwise take months to years of effort to build the same. As the name suggests, with one click, customers will be able to build an end-to-end -end data platform starting from data ingestion from various sources, data standardization, building data lineage, performing data governance, and data sharing to multiple other consumer accounts, which enables data mesh kind of an architecture where multiple data producers can share the data to multiple other data consumers. So with one click, customers will be able to build their entire Lakehouse platform, both Data Lake as well as Data Warehouse. We'll go over a scenario showing a journey of a data scientist building a machine learning model. Here we have John, who is a data scientist, wanted to build a machine learning model based on customer spending habits. So he wants to have access to customer demographics data and some transactions data to know on what products does customers spend on. He goes into the enterprise data platform and searches for the customer demographics data and customer transactions data. He was able to find customer transactions data in one of the data warehouse table, but he doesn't have access to that. So he has to raise a request to get access to the transactions table. On the other hand, he couldn't find any table which contains customer demographics data in the enterprise data platform, but he knows that one of the on-prem databases in MySQL has got customer demographics information in the customer master table. First, he needs to bring in the demographics data from the on-prem database to the enterprise data platform. Even after bringing in the data, he will not have access to the table by default. So he has to raise a request to get access to the customer demographics data as well. Once the access goes through, he'll be able to access these tables from his own data science account which enables him to build a machine learning model successfully. The overall process of bringing in the data from on-prem and getting access would take weeks to months of effort. Using Atomics, John will be able to bring in the customer demographics data from on-prem MySQL database, get access to the customer demographics data from the data lake, get access to the customer transactions data from the data warehouse, all of the above with just one click of a button. Let's get into the demo and see how John performs all the above actions using Atomics. John logs into Atomics as an admin user. Once he logs in, he finds the status dashboard. The dashboard displays the number of objects or tables that are brought into the data lake from various source systems. It displays the real-time progress of all the batch process for the date selected. Number of new objects that are brought in, number of objects where the data is refreshed from the source system and its execution status, number of objects from the data lake that were shared to multiple other consumers, number of objects from the data warehouse that were shared to multiple other consumers. So it's a one-stop dashboard where you can get the entire picture of the data platform. When he clicks the object count or the object overview link, it displays the details for all the objects. He'll be able to find the source system database, schema, and other details from where the object or the table was brought in from. When he clicks any of this object ID, he'll be able to find more details of the selected object. Some of these controls are editable, where he can modify and save. He can modify the compute capacity or compute worker node type. The updated values will be referred to in the subsequent execution of the object. In the object's overview screen, he'll be able to filter based on various attributes, with multiple dynamic filter conditions. He'll be able to sort on various attributes. He can also set his own preferences to show our ID attributes and set the page size. All these navigational controls 
like dynamic filters, sorting, pagination, and preferences are all available in all the screens in Atomics. In our example use case, John wants to subscribe to customer demographics and transaction tables to build a machine learning model. So he goes to the object marketplace and chooses consumption. Search for the customer demographics data and customer transaction data in both data lake as well as data warehouse. He couldn't find any database or tables related to customer in the data lake. So he moves on to data warehouse. He was able to find a table related to customer transactions, but he couldn't find anything related to customer demographics. He is aware that one of the on-prem MySQL databases have information related to customer demographics. He need to bring in the data from on-prem MySQL customer master table to the enterprise data platform to build this machine learning model. To do so, first he has to register or onboard the source MySQL server. He goes to onboard and discover and selects the source. He changes the source type as RDBMS batch and clicks on add new data source. He then enters the MySQL server details and credential to connect to the server in this pop-up window and clicks on board. The source MySQL server has been registered successfully and the credentials are stored in the secrets manager. Now he needs to scan the MySQL server and discover the list of tables and objects present in the customer database. So he goes to the onboard and discover and selects discover. He changes the source type as RDBMS batch and clicks on discover new data. He then enters the source system name, database name, schema name, and other relevant details in this pop-up window and click discover. This will scan all the tables in the database and bring in all the metadata information to the objects marketplace. He goes to the objects marketplace, selects the type as onboarding, source type as RDBMS batch. This will display the metadata of all the objects that have been scanned from various sources. He filters for the database name that he just scanned. It will display all the tables that have been scanned for the customer database. To bring in the customer master table, he has to raise a request to bring in the data. For that, he selects the customer master table and click on the submit button. The request will be sent to the approver. In this case, the request is sent to admin. He is approver. Since John himself has logged in as admin, he can approve the request by himself. He goes to the approval process screen, selects the customer master table, and clicks approve. Once approved, you will be able to track the progress of the data ingestion process by clicking on the object onboarding summary screen or clicking the link from the status dashboard. All the necessary AWS resources will be created during the object onboarding process to bring in the object from the on-prem source database. Object onboarding summary screen will display the status of overall object onboarding process. Now the status is running, so the onboarding process is in progress. If you click on the object onboarding link, it will open up the details screen where you find the step-by-step -step details of the onboarding process. Every time you refresh, you will see the progress of the batch. It takes few minutes to complete. Now that it is complete, you can see the status of all these steps have been succeeded. Now that the object onboarding process is complete, the object execution process will be picked up. The actual data will be transferred from the on-prem source to the enterprise data lake during the object execution process. You'll be able to track the status of the object execution process by either clicking on this uh, status dashboard or the object execution summary screen. Object execution summary screen will display the status of the overall object execution process. But the status of the object execution process is running. If you click on the object execution ID link, it will open up the details screen where you find the step-by-step -step details of the object execution process. So every time you refresh the screen, you will see the progress of the batch. It takes few minutes to complete. Now that it is complete, you can see the status of all these steps have been succeeded. Now we know that the customer master table has been successfully brought into the enterprise data platform. John can now try accessing these tables from the data science account and validate. He's trying to query the data from the customer master table. He got an invalid request exception error since he does not have access to this table yet. Let's try to query the customer transactions table. He got a similar error, resource not found exception for the same reason that he does not have access to these tables yet. Let's go back to Atomics and try to subscribe a request access for these tables. I am back to Atomics and I am in the objects marketplace screen. Last time, John requested to onboard an object from on from MySQL database. This time, since the objects are already available in the enterprise data platform, he needs to request consumption access. So select the option object consumption. You will see there are two types. One for request access to the objects that are there in the data lake and one for requesting access to the objects that are there in the data warehouse. Let's try to raise the access request for the customer master table that we just brought into the data lake. So I selected the source type as data lake 
filtered for the database name as customer db and he was able to find the customer master table. Select the customer master table and hit submit. Enter the consumer account number, role and other consumer related details and click submit. The request will be sent to the approver. In this case, the request is sent to admin who is the approver. Let's repeat the same process to raise the access request for customer transaction table which was there in the data warehouse. Select the source type as data warehouse and search for the customer transaction table and click submit. Enter the consumer account number, cluster information and other consumer related details and click submit. This request will also be sent to the admin for approval. Since John himself has logged in as admin, he can approve the request by himself. He goes to the approval process screen and select the consumption as type. He selects both customer master as well as customer transaction tables and clicks approve. Once approved, he can monitor the progress of the request by clicking either the data lake access or the data warehouse access summary screens. It works the same way as we saw during the object onboarding and execution process. You will be able to monitor the progress of the request at a summary level or at a detail level for both data lake as well as data warehouse. John now has access to both customer master as well as customer transactions table. He should now be able to access these tables and build this machine learning model successfully. He is now able to successfully query the customer master table as well as customer transactions table. He should now be able to access both these tables and build this machine learning model successfully. So using Atomics, John was able to bring in the customer demographics data from on-prem MySQL database, get access to the customer demographics data from the data lake, get access to the customer transactions data from the Redshift data warehouse, all of the above with just a click of a button. Thanks, that's the end of a short demo on Atomics.